Thank you for this introduction. My name is Von Rieu Krasier. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Texas Heart Institute and CHI Health Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. I'm also program director of uh, peripheral vascular intervention at Texas Heart Institute and uh, Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. The title of my presentation is uh, TAVR versus Surgical Aortic Valve Replacement uh, and uh, the Survival Hemodynamics, Bioprosthetic Valve Deterioration, and Long-Term Outcomes and the Need for Re-Intervention. As far as my disclosures are concerned, I'm on the Speaker's Bureau for Medtronic. So what is the currently uh, available um, uh, percutaneous uh, valve uh, that are available, so-called TAVR? Well, Medtronic uh, Evolute Pro is self-expanding valve that we can see on the left-hand side. And Edward Sapien uh, 3 valve is a balloon expanding valve. And uh, more recently, there was a device that was approved, the uh, Abbott Vascular Portico device uh, that's also self-expanding valve. Now, when we look through the history of um, different clinical trials, we can see as far as the core valve is concerned, there was extreme risk uh, study. Uh, and as far as all cause mortality is concerned, we can see the, from 2011. Uh, then the next generation was Evolute uh, R valve that in comparison with the surgical outcomes in high risk patients, we can see that uh, in a yellow line, the surgical mortality was higher than uh, with the percutaneous uh, Evolute R valve. Follow that, uh, a new uh, valve was introduced, Evolute Pro, and that was uh, studied in intermediate risk uh, patients in comparison with uh, surgical approach, and we can see the results are very similar at two years uh, follow-up. And finally, the more recent uh, so-called low-risk trial uh, with Evolute Pro Plus valve uh, comparing the surgery to TAVR, and we can see that um, surgery had slightly higher uh, mortality and uh, slightly um, and similar uh, stroke rate uh, at 24 month of follow up. Now, limited data exists on the incidence and factors that are associated with uh, structural valve deterioration after TAVR and also after surgery from a large-scale multicenter and randomized clinical trials. However, previous work demonstrated that early generation intravalvular or balloon expandable bioprosthesis have significantly higher five-year rates of a structural valve deterioration in comparison to surgery, whereas newer generation annular valves have similar structural valve um, deterioration rates, as we can see here in this particular diagram at five years of follow-up, where uh, the Sapien XT was an early generation balloon expandable valve with a 9.5% mortality in five years, and a newer generation Sapien 3 had significantly lower mortality of 3.9, and uh, surgery is mortality at five years was 3.5%. Now, prior analysis have shown that the TAVI with supraannular self-expanding bioprosthesis, uh, such as um, Evolute uh, R and Evolute Pro, had significantly lower hemodynamic valve deterioration or reintervention due to stenosis than surgical valve repair. And this has been shown in a Notion 8 uh, year follow-up study core valve versus SAVR as far as bioprosthetic valve failure is concerned, where at uh, eight years of follow-up, uh, SAVR's uh, uh, biologic valve failure was occurring in 10.6% of patients versus only in 7.3% of patients uh, that had a core valve procedure. As far as uh, hemodynamics are concerned, when we look at the late mean gradients after core valve versus surgery at five-year follow-up, 
in uh, cardiovascular high-risk patients, we can see that the effective orifice area uh, for uh, <clears throat> core valve is shown in blue, was uh, larger than with surgery. And as far as uh, mean uh, gradient was concerned, again, on the right side, we can see that it was also larger with core valve than with surgery, meaning that um, core valve performs well and better as far as effective orifice area is concerned and also as, far as well as the mean gradient is concerned at five years of follow-up. Now, uh, the data is also available for a balloon expandable valve from the CHOICE uh, trial that was carried on in, in Europe, in, in Germany, and we can look at the late mean gradients uh, uh, comparing uh, core valve versus uh, uh, sapien valve, and we can see that the gradients uh, at five-year follow-up uh, shown for core valve in blue are significantly lower or almost half of what they were with a Sapien XT valve that was a previous generation Sapien valve. The comparison of uh, Sapien uh, self balloon expandable valve versus Evolute uh, self expanding valve are shown in this particular study that was published by Ring in the uh, American Journal of Cardiology in uh, 2020. We can see as far as echo measurements are concerned, at one month follow-up, the gradient was significantly lower for uh, Evolute uh, valve than for Sapien. And when we look at the mean uh, gradient higher of 20 millimeters of mercury, which is significant, again was significantly lower for Evolute uh, than for Sapien. And when we look at the uh, one-year follow-up, again, similar findings were observed uh, for uh, uh, better outcomes with uh, Evolute than with Sapien. On the right-hand side, we can see that, again, as far as mean gradients are concerned, uh, they were uh, significantly lower in comparison with, uh, <clears throat> with Sapien uh, valve, as we can see here as well. In this particular uh, study from um, Australia, as far as um, one-year mortality is concerned, we can see that uh, impaired valve hemodynamics at one-year follow-up uh, showed a definite effect as far as the risk and mortality is concerned. And uh, there was a significantly higher mortality in patients with se severe impaired valve hemodynamics than in patients with normal or mildly impaired uh, valve hemodynamics at one year follow-up. Now, as far as uh, additional data related to structural valve deterioration in patients that undergo TAVR versus AVR uh, merits further evaluation. And recent analysis that was uh, presented um, at the uh, ACC meeting in March of 2022 uh, uh, looked at this particular aspect, uh, and the study objective uh, included a core valve uh, evolute pool data analysis to evaluate five-year incidence outcomes and predictors of hemodynamic structural valve deterioration in patients undergoing supraannular self-expanding TAVI and surgery from the core valve U.S. pivotal and SIR TAVI trials. And what we can see here at five-year follow-up in patients that had a large, uh, uh, than, larger than 23 millimeter annulus, again, uh, significantly um, higher uh, structural valve deterioration with surgery than with uh, TAVR. And this was particularly true for patients that uh, had uh, smaller orifices uh, such as uh, patients uh, that had a very small annulus of less than 23 millimeters, but it was also important for patients that had larger annuli. Now, when we look at core valve uh, pool data analysis, as far as predictors uh, are concerned for both surgery and also TAVR, we can see 
that in pooled uh, randomized trial for TAVI, uh, the all-cause mortality was higher when structural valve deterioration occurred. Also, cardiovascular mortality was higher. Need for hospitalization uh, for aortic valve-related uh, conditions was higher, and the composite uh, assessment was higher. This was also true for surgical valves as well, as we can see further down. And it was true for all TAVI uh, valves, uh, for all variables included. Now, additional uh, univariate and multivariate predictors were analyzed, and uh, all the patients fare better as far as structural valve deterioration is concerned rather than younger patients. And male patients fared better than female patients, and this obviously had to do something with the uh, annular size. The body surface area was a negative uh, predictor. It means uh, causing more structural valve deterioration. The larger the body surface area, the highest of structural valve deterioration is concerned. Patients that had a prior coronary intervention uh, and also patients that had a prior atrial fibrillation or flutter had lower structural valve deterioration. A potential explanation for those two um, findings are that patients that uh, are treated for coronary artery disease and prior intervention and patients that are treated for atrial fibrillation and flutter uh, require more aggressive antiplatelet and uh, anticoagulation therapy than are normally given to uh, patients after TAVI. Now, one of the great concerns after a TAVI procedure is the incidence of and significance of patient prosthesis mismatch. It means that the prosthesis uh, that is used is either too small or too large, or it's underexpanded or it's overexpanded. And this was particularly true in the so-called WIN TAVI trial, which is uh, Women's International Registry. And we can see as far as predictors of uh, patient prosthesis mismatch is concerned in this particular study, it occurred uh, roughly in 36% of patients, which is quite uh, concerning. This was more common for smaller valves, less than 23 millimeters, that occurred roughly in 50% of patients and particularly true for balloon expandable valves, which uh, again occurred in 43.5% of patients. However, patients with self-expanding valve uh, had significantly lower incidence of uh, 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 prosthesis uh, patient mismatch as is shown in a blue uh, graph. Now, as far as uh, subclinical leaflet thrombosis and reduced leaflet motion, or so-called HALT, or thrombosis of the valve is concerned. Uh, obviously, this finding care is uh, quite concerning, and in certain instances, uh, quite uh, concerning consequences. In uh, surgical literature, the incidence of HALT, or silent leaflet thrombosis, uh, in surgical bioprosthesis occurs is somewhere between 0.8 to 4% of patients. However, post uh, tarver HALT, ranges significantly between 4.5 to 40% depending on the publication. Now, more recently, FDA has expressed concerns and have called for prompt attention to this clinical problem. The images uh, on the, the CT on the left-hand side and also on the right-hand side in diastole and systole uh, are shown with patients that have limited uh, uh, valve uh, leaflet motion or thrombosis. Now, in this particular uh, study that was published in the American Journal of Cardiology in 2020, as far as HALT is concerned, comparing uh, uh, TABR versus uh, surgery uh, at 30 days and also at one year, we can see that at 30 days uh, the incidence was uh, similar for both uh, for surgery and percutaneous valve deployment, somewhere in the range between 16 to 70 percent of patients. Most of those um, were so-called mild halt or a certain degree of a moderate halt. And at one year of follow-up, uh, the numbers were higher, 
there was statistically no significant difference between SAVR and TAVR. And uh, as we can see, most of the uh, TAVR patients had a relatively mild degree of uh, HALT uh, uh, and significantly lower degree of HALT than with uh, surgery. Now, more recently, uh, Dr. Popma presented uh, uh, at the ACC meeting in 2020 results with um, Evolute uh, data, data as far as a more than 50% halt, which is quite concerning halt, and we can see at 30 days uh, it was um, a little bit higher with the SAVR than TAVR. However, at one year follow up, uh, it was higher in SAVR patients than in TAVR patients. Now, uh, as far as uh, Partner 3 and Sapien data, uh, data is concerned, SAVR versus uh, TAVR is concerned. Uh, in subclinical leaflet thrombosis, uh, we can see that with Sapien 3 at 30 days, uh, the occurrence was roughly uh, in, occurring in 13% of patients, and in surgery, significantly lower in 5% of patients. At uh, one year of follow up, uh, uh, the incidence of uh, HALT was uh, similar in both Sapien and uh, surgical group occurring between. 20 to 28 percent of patients. One of the concerns as far as TAVR is concerned, uh, treatment of uh, patients with bicuspid aortic valve with uh, TAVR. Here we can see uh, uh, various degree of uh, complications as far as uh, bicuspid aortic valve is concerned. It can be present with no RAFI, present with uh, non-calcified RAFI, or patients that have a fused RAFI and severe calcifications. The new uh, classification that's shown on the right hand side, we can see uh, from no calcification to a severe calcification uh, of infusion of RAFI, we can see that patients with more advanced uh, disease and severe fusion and calcification have dramatically higher mortality at two or three years of follow-up. Uh, uh, one of the main uh, detriment as far as uh, TAVR is concerned with self-expanding and also with balloon expanding valves are concerned, calcification in the left ventricular outflow as well as calcification of the annulus and the valve uh, leaflets and uh, less than optimal outcomes uh, related to uh, uh, aortic regurgitation as is shown here. There are uh, numerous studies that have been uh, published uh, related to uh, bicuspid aortic valve, uh, uh, related to um, uh, TAVR procedure with uh, both uh, balloon expandable and self-expandable valve, as we can see here. In the study by uh, Forrest and all uh, that look at the Evolute self-expanding valve, there was uh, uh, evidence of more need for reintervention uh, in balloon expandable valve, there was no difference uh, in mortality is concern or stroke or coronary obstruction or uh, uh, patient prosthesis mismatch or any changes in hemodynamics is our concern. Now in a Macar study uh, that studied the Sapien 3 uh, balloon expandable valve, stroke was somewhat higher at 30 days and also at one year with balloon expandable valve but no difference uh, in mortality or gradients or perivalvular leak. And we can see uh, in another study in, uh, uh, that was published in the uh, Journal of uh, Cardiovascular Imaging uh, in relatively uh, small uh, number of uh, patients that uh, at 30 days there was no difference in mortality or stroke or, patient, uh, or pacemaker or gradients uh, needed. Uh, in uh, the study uh, comparing a Sapien 3 and Evolute uh, are concerned, um, we can see in the last study shown here on the bottom with a follow-up at 30 days and one year that uh, uh, bicuspid aortic valve had higher risk of uh, conversion to surgery, need for second valve implant, high incidence of perivalvular leak, uh, and uh, uh, need for uh, reintervention for device failure.
there was no difference in mortality or stroke or paravalvular leak between balloon expandable versus self expandable valve. Balloon expandable valves had lower rate of second valve and a need for a permanent pacemaker, but had higher rate of annular rupture. So, in conclusion, the supraannular family of uh, TAVR devices provides better acute valve performance and larger effective orifice areas than surgical bioprosthesis. Acute valve performance, such as gradients, uh, uh, effective orifice area, or uh, patient uh, prosthesis uh, mismatch, was statistically uh, better with supraannular TAVR than surgery up to eight years of follow-up uh, then after aortic valve replacement. The supraannular valve has less hemodynamic valve deterioration than SAVR at five years after aortic valve replacement. And intraannular balloon expandable TAVR has similar or higher rates of structural valve deterioration and bioprosthetic valve failure compared to SAVR. However, additional longer-term studies are needed to compare intraannular TAVR to supraannular TAVR uh, for long-term outcomes. There are ongoing studies uh, in patients uh, with TAVR after SAVR for smaller uh, annuli, such as aortic uh, area of uh, 43 uh, uh, millimeters uh, square, uh, annuli and also in women that have a smaller annuli to determine the implications of acute hemodynamic performance and long-term outcomes. Thank you very much for your attention.